Clarity has been around for, I think, 10 plus years. I'll let Rick introduce himself and their company. Hey, Rick, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for juggling and, and moving around a little bit. I apologize for all the technical difficulties. I feel like I had it all under control, and then the last minute I couldn't figure out where to click the button. So No worries, no worries. We're just rolling with it, so uh, we'll keep it going. All right, so you can hear me all right. Just want to do quick sound. Everything's technically sound for the moment. Okay. We'll go yep, with. you're all set. I'll turn it over to you. All right. I appreciate the, the introduction, Matt. And I, Matthew, I appreciate um, being invited to kind of talk a little bit about what we're doing and kind of who we're working with and who we're working for. I will start by pulling up my little slide deck here. Uh, and see if I can put it into... And that didn't work. All right, I keep moving my screen and I can't share on that screen because I lose it. All right, we'll do this a simple way. Forgive me. Share. Is right. the share function being finicky at all? Uh, yeah, I went to click on and it, I lost my button. There it is. Okay, let's see if I can. Let me try. We get you set up. Around. All right. Ah, doesn't behave well with two screens. At least not on mine. Let's start over here. Share screen. Share screen. Okay. Be us. There we go. How am I doing? Perfect. This looks great. All right. Okay. So I want to introduce, obviously, myself and, and our firm is Clarity. We have uh, been in the so fintech software um, industry for really my entire career. And when I say we, there's several of us who work with Risk Clarity who have kind of iterated through no a number of different firms that we've uh, created and and sold and merged and evolved over time. So I'm the founder and CEO. We're based in Golden, Colorado, uh, just outside of Denver in the beautiful foothills of Colorado. Uh, I've been in the, the family office, specifically the, specifically the family office space for uh, technology for my entire career. So I started my career back uh, in the late 90s. My mom was running a single family office that evolved into a multifamily office. And so I started with her and building some technology solutions to help build efficiencies for her firm, and that kind of evolved into a number of other a number of other companies. So uh, my my college roommate and I, Carl Connect, who is his, he and I worked together for for decades, uh, started a company called Digital Partner. We ended up selling that to a firm called MyCFO out in Silicon Valley. I know that MyCFO had a pretty big presence in, in the Los Angeles area as well. And much of our alumni, much of the alumni base of MyCFO have become uh, clients of ours as we've evolved from the WellTouch uh, through my stock trip days and into Risk Clarity. So working in a number of firms, predominantly on portfolio accounting, data integration, uh, financial administration, bill pay and accounting is really where we've spent in our entire careers. Uh, talk a little bit about Risk Clarity. Uh, we work exclusively in the super complex, ultra high net worth marketplace. So we work with family offices, we work with private banks, we work with business management firms, we work with um, law firms and, and others that really serve this very affluent, very complicated uh, financial structures for, the, for these families. And in particular, like I said, we work a lot with the financial accounting data. So the portfolio accounting, so all of the investments, uh, the general ledger, uh, bill pay, and really kind of try to bridge those gaps. What we do particularly well at Risk Clarity is we speak, we say we speak three languages. We have the language of investments, we have the language of accounting, and we have the language of technology. And they all have their own nuances and they all have their own complications and they all have their own acronyms. And we do a pretty good job of being able to translate all of those different uh, uh, languages and topics in, into a cohesive workflow and a cohesive model. Um, we joke that the word security means 
something different to each of those constituent groups. So we have to figure out how to translate uh, the word security or, or other things. Account is another one. What is an account? In, at a bank, it's one thing. At a, at a brokerage firm, it's another thing. And in a, in a general ledger is something completely different. And so we really try to simplify complexity. That's been our mantra and our challenge for, for the last couple of decades as we've been working through uh, building and evolving and innovating this technology. I want to specifically talk about consolidated reporting. There's a lot of topics around financial technology for this space, but consolidated reporting tends to be the one that we spend a lot of time talking through. How do we pull data from all of these different sources and transform it and build workflow and checks and balances and reconciliation and then be able to generate a, a, a report or a series of reports that kind of wrap all of that information into you know, one page or one booklet of, of reports. And that's really the challenge. Uh, I, th I think anybody who's, who's tried to do it manually has really can really appreciate the fact that this is, really is a difficult challenge. So when we're working with financial institutions, uh, let's say it's a, a, a brokerage firm like, a, like a Morgan Stanley or, or Merrill Lynch or, or others, we, we pull all of this data on a monthly basis in, in statements and try to coalesce all of the different data elements on all of these different reports into something that's cohesive and standardized so that when we run a report, uh, the same securities have the same pricing, the, the same uh, asset classes are, are grouped together appropriately for each of these investment profiles. The data sets are challenging. Uh, when we're talking pr uh, paper, it's, it's extraordinarily challenging, but it doesn't get that much better when we start talking about data feeds and being able to pull data directly from these financial sources, just because all of the data feeds uh, are their own standard. There, there's yet to be a standard uh, designed around disseminating investment information from all of the different banks and institutions out there. And then when we layer in alternative investments and in hedge funds and private equity, uh, it just adds more complexity and it becomes even more challenging. At the end of the day, there's still manual entry. Uh, and when we talk about the, the alternative investments, the homes or the cars or the, the, the private investments that they're making in uh, agriculture or in uh, really any other any other asset class, it becomes very challenging to find a data feed for that information. Fortunately, it's not updated that frequently, but nonetheless, there is a manual component to that. Uh, that manual component is very error prone and it tends to be slow. In fact, most of the alternative investments historically have, have repriced themselves you know, two, three, four months, six months down the road. So it's hard to understand what, what you have at any point in time. So when we talk about what we do, we've created a model that's really based around a data hub, and we call it the Risk Clarity Data Hub. And that data hub has accounting engines, it has investment engines, it has uh, management analytics, uh, it has a CRM component, it has a dashboard for looking across all of these different tools. Uh, but more importantly, it's got this data validation model, and it's got a lot of audit logging. So the ability to see what's changed, what's going on, and being able to make sure that that data is, is accurate, and we validated it three or four different ways. Now, when I talk about these engines, I want to be really clear on that in that we spend a lot of time integrating with other tools. So we believe there is no one size fits all best system for working with the affluent market. And we believe there's a lot of different tools out there that all serve a very important role and can make sure that the person who's working with that information, consuming that information, reconciling it, is using a tool that is best for them and most comfortable for them and really integrates into their normal process and their workflow. Uh, so when we pull data from banks or institutional custodians or uh, manage investment managers, we can pull them directly or we can go through one of these other platforms. So Black Diamond, Adapar, InvestNet, Tamarack, PCR uh, are ones that we already have partnerships or integrations with so that we can pull data from those platforms into our data hub and then be able to create reports or send that information along to a CRM system or send it along to a general ledger system like Agilink, uh, one of our partners uh, in the industry that has really helped us define what this workflow looks like. And, and in fact, we've been able to build 
software into the Agilink environment or the Agilink ecosystem called InvestLink that facilitates the data from all of these different platforms into a, a double entry, journal entry uh, that is can be consumed by, by Agilink. And then all of the financial reporting that comes off of that uh, is just kind of already wrapped into that. Here is an example of InvestLink, which is uh, a risk clarity designed and built product that is bundled or can be bundled with the Agilink environment. And this is kind of a, a snapshot of some of the types of information that we can pull in uh, and report on. So looking at security allocation, asset or custodial allocation, uh, income, top holdings, uh, activity, investment activity. So we're in an effort to create those journal entries, we're capturing all of this information, and then we can obviously report it in, in a standard format that, that's more akin to something you would get from one of your financial institutions, um, you know, Morgan Stanley or, or JP Morgan or, or one of the, the, the larger banks. Uh, we think we do a particularly good job of organizing that information in a way that is unique to the, the family office, the business management office, the family themselves, uh, the, the end client that makes more sense as opposed to just kind of here's your generic statement that that every one of our clients gets. So we have the ability to kind of customize that uh, and personalize it quite a bit more. Some of the, the partners that we've that we've made along this path, and, and like I said, we believe that uh, best of breed is finding tools that do a perfectly good job or the best job of whatever it is you're asking them to do. And it really depends on a lot of, a lot of factors and a lot of personalities. Um, but the, the firms that we work really closely with, uh, Agilink, Adapar, uh, Black Diamond, uh, Pathstone is one of our marquee clients and we've uh, really integrated a number of their systems. They, they happen to be uh, acquiring a number of firms and have over the last few years. So being able to integrate data from all of these, ac these acquired firms into a data hub which allows us to do centralized reporting, ties into their CRM system, ties into their document management model, ties into their reporting systems, uh, being able to kind of facilitate all of those different uh, nuances, if you will. And then Cypress Data Defense is a firm that we work very closely with on the security model. Obviously what we're or aggregating and integrating uh, is highly sensitive. So being able to have somebody that's watching us and checking and, and checking every line of code and monitoring all of the systems to make sure that uh, nothing is introduced, even uh, inadvertently uh, through process, through software, through uh, technology. We're, we've got that in place. And then the Family Wealth Alliance is an organization that uh, really oversees or integrates a lot of the different the data for a lot of different family offices and allows us to kind of really figure out what's going on in the world and what asset classes are hot and what types of securities are, are, are emerging and what types of challenges are, are living within that family office. I wanted to keep it pretty brief so that there was time for, answer, for questions and answers. Uh, and so I'll kind of wrap up with my prepared remarks at this moment. Is there anything, that el anything else I can address or, or, or answer as we move forward? Awesome, thank you for that, Rick. Yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll give a chance for folks to type questions into the chat. Um, I think uh, you kind of mentioned this about some of your partners, but consolidation in the space has been obviously an ongoing trend. <clears throat> I know that we have uh, been in touch with the past home folks before, and uh, this also happens a lot in the business management space. And I know um, the data faction team has been rolling out the InvestLink solution to firms, which I think is still an ongoing process with a lot of them. So uh, I think thank you for your presentation and kind of showing you know how this all comes together. It's very complex stuff and a real pain for a lot of firms that deal with this. I think especially as investments have gotten more complex, uh, you know, clients are demanding uh, more in-depth reporting. Um, so it's good to see how this all comes together. How the sausage is made. Um, what's the best way to reach out to you guys for firms? Um, I would I, oh, oh, move to the next slide. I will offer up that uh, my my own email address. So our, it's Rick at riskclarity.com. Okay. There we and go. We'll put that. There you uh, go. Riskclarity.com. Yes. So you know we're we're. Accountants, investment analysts, bookkeepers, and technologists all kind of working together under one roof and 
virtual roof and, and really trying to solve a lot of these complexities for the most complex families. Amazing. We appreciate it. Great. Well, um, I know our next talk, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, but the next talk is going to also talk about uh, specifically alternate investments. Um, not so much on the reporting side, but in the creating reporting side of things uh, that you guys inevitably have to deal with, I think, Rick. Uh, it's going to be a great panel. So we, we will take a little 10 minute break here. Um, Rick, thank you again. Uh, we're taking video recordings of all of these. So if you miss bits and pieces, that's fine. Um, we'll send out links to this afterwards. Um, thank you very much, Rick, for taking the time to go through your platform today. Matthew, thank you for inviting me. It was wonderful. Awesome. Thanks Absolutely. So Absolutely. Cool. So we'll take the stage down here um, just for 10 minutes, but definitely plan on being back here at 11 a.m. Pacific or 2 p.m., which is in 10 minutes. And um, this next panel is going to be super interesting. Uh, we just did, we talked with the, the speakers uh, yesterday, actually, and preparing for this. Um, and so you won't want to miss it. It's going to be a really interesting take into what's happening in alternate investments and crypto assets and technology and how this is all coming together right now. So um, we'll be back in 10 and, uh, and uh, yeah, talk then. <laughs>